So if you're looking to make your daily routine more adventurous and take the long way home, the KTM 390 Adventures is for you. And it's, it's underrated by a lot of people, but only people that haven't ridden it haven't experienced what a fun bike this is to ride. Hi, I'm Chris Birch, and this is the new KTM 390 Adventure. The KTM 390 Adventure is a lightweight adventure travel machine that's the perfect introduction to the extreme world of KTM Adventure. Its power to weight ratio, innovative technology, and full-size adventure equipment make it a really good option for those riders looking to get into the world of adventure riding, but in a smaller, easier, more manageable package. So I brought along a friend, uh, someone that's new to the whole you know, KTM adventure world. Hey, hey Chris. How you doing? So please uh, introduce yourself and uh, explain how you got onto this whole adventure thing. So my name is Dominic and I used to be a road rider, but then I came across your Birch Approved series that you did on YouTube nice. and I was really excited. It looked so much fun to me and that's why I decided to change to the KTM adventure world. Cool, man. And uh, what is it about the KTM 390 adventure that attracted you to this bike? So a friend of mine has a KTM 890 Adventure R and I gave that bike a try, but it didn't feel really comfortable as I don't have the skills right now to get into a big bike like that one. So the KTM 390 Adventure fits perfectly for me as I feel much more comfortable. Okay, so not quite ready for like the 890, 1290R just yet, but exactly. uh, wanting to kind of step into the whole adventure world and yeah, good choice. So what are some of the features, some of the aspects of this bike that you like? So first of all, what I really like is the lower seat height as it gives me more safety when it comes to stopping a bike as I can yeah. put both feet on the ground really safely. That's the most uh, important thing for me. But also like handling the bike when it comes to the power of it. Because in the beginning I felt like maybe it's a bit too less for me to go off the track, but actually this bike gives it everything and it's super cool to ride. Yeah, the, the motor on these is actually, it's really good fun. Eh? Like it's, it's nice and mellow off the bottom, but when you get further up in the rev range, like there, there's a lot to play with there. Eh? Exactly, yeah. And then what combines it is the cool seating position that you have on the bike. Like it really feels comfortable to go off the track because it gives you so much comfortability. And, and how do you see yourself using it? Like what, what's your... Uh... What's your week on your 390 look like? Well, of course I'm going to use it every day in the summer, like for short-term commuting. But I also want to do like short trips on the weekend or even maybe going to a four or five days trek on, in the summer. Yeah, expedition like the KTM Adventure Rally, something like that. Maybe I'll go even a try, yeah. Yeah, cool. So Chris, what makes the KTM 390 Adventure such an off-road capable bike? I think one of the real changes for uh, the off-road ability now is uh, there's the option of the, the spoked wheels. Okay. So a spoked wheel over a cast wheel. A cast wheel, then it's a bit more accessible, more sort of street-focused sort of thing. But uh, with the spoked wheel, you're going to get like more compliancy, more bump absorption, and it's going to be stronger, so uh, able to take kind of the hits and the bumps that, uh, that off-road riding creates. So how are these tyres performing off the road? You're not going to want to go straight into a full-on enduro track with these tyres. Right. But uh, for what we're going to be doing on the adventure bike world, they're, they're actually really good. So uh, any type of road condition, broken roads, dirt roads, rocky trails and tracks, that sort of thing, they're going to be really good. And uh, this is the sort of scenario where we're using this sort of a bike. We need that versatility and that ability to kind of take on any road, any track that we come across. I saw that we have a WP suspension which is adjustable. Could you please explain how that works? Yeah, sure. So having the externally adjustable suspension, it's actually not so common in this class of motorbikes. So it's, it's a really good feature to have. And uh, you've got externally adjustable suspension on the fork. So you've got uh, your compression dampening on the left and your rebound dampening on the right. So a really good way to remember it. Uh, red, right, rebound, RRR. That's so, a good one. Yeah, so it's nice to be able to sort of quickly uh, dial the bike into the conditions. Uh, you can even do it on the fly. Right. Uh, on the rear, we've got a rebound adjustment and really importantly, uh, preload adjustment as well. So that's really important because we need to keep the balance of the bike correct when we're changing our load. So if you're taking all your camping gear or a pillion, that sort of thing, we can adjust that suspension to keep the balance of the bike correct, keep the bike handling properly. And the, this ability to adjust quickly is really important for adventure bikes because we change so much what we do with them. You know, maybe we're commuting during the week, then riding more aggressively and sporty sure. in the weekend or getting into the off-road. And 
being able to sort of dial the bike into the conditions quickly is a very, very important thing. One of the things that I like most about the bike is the power to weight ratio. This bike's got a, a really excellent power to weight ratio for its class. And the big thing is it's a smaller bike, it's a lighter bike. So that balances that sort of power to weight ratio out really well with the 400cc engine. So what's really important for adventure riding though is not, you know, how much peak power the bike makes, but how it delivers that power. So we need a broad spread of power. We need a lot of torque and smooth throttle response off the bottom so we can create the traction off-road, you know, drive out of the turns, that sort of thing. And uh, we also need that, that top end power as well. So when you, know, you drop it down a gear high up in the RPM, we can overtake trucks on the hills and you know, lift the front wheel at the, the, the times. And you know, there's a lot of fun to be had with this engine. KTM has a lot of experience in the Dakar and in the rally section. Did this experience affect the development of the bike? Uh, why don't you jump on it and I'll show you. So see how you can kind of hold the bike between your knees? It's, it's nice and narrow and there's absolutely nothing getting in your way. So you've got a lot of maneuverability on the bike and it's nice smooth all the way up the side. There's no weird brackets or anything getting in your way and that allows you to move around the bike and ride it in a you know, really aggressive, uh, sporty sort of a manner. And that uh, ergonomics, that design has come straight from the Dakar. So as the sport of adventure riding continues to change and improve, it's really important that the technology and the technique changes and improves with it. Absolutely. Chris, I saw that this bike has ABS and cornering ABS, but how does that help me when it comes to off-road riding? Yeah, so the, the early systems of, of uh, ABS, they were pretty challenging in the off-road, but uh, that's the past, and now we have the present that the new systems with uh, specific off-road ABS, and it, it works really, really well. So it's single channel ABS, so it's uh, no ABS in the rear. You can lock and slide the back end, use it to tighten your line, set the bike into the turns. Uh, but with the ABS is still going to be functioning in the front, but with a setting that's specific for off-road riding. So it's going to allow more slip, more dig than it will in, in street ABS. But if it senses too much, if the front starts to lock, the front starts to slide, it's going to engage the ABS and uh, you're going to be able to continue around your corner. It takes a bit of figuring out, like it takes a while to learn to uh, adapt your technique and to trust the ABS system, but once you do, that uh, off-road ABS is really powerful. Like, it works better than me. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Uh, but what happens when the bike's starting to stall? Uh, yeah, so in the, in the older systems, every time you stall the motor, the ABS would default back to street mode, which could be quite frustrating in an off-road situation. But now, uh, once you set it into off-road ABS, the bike is set into off-road ABS permanently and, until you change it. So what about the Quick Shifter Plus? I guess that's a pretty cool feature, right? Yeah, the Quick Shifter is fun. Uh, it's uh, definitely more of a, a street riding sort of thing than the, uh, than the off-road side. Um, but it's a lot of fun to use. Uh, not only is it upshifting, so you can hold the power on, leave the clutch alone, just kick through the gears as you're accelerating. Uh, with the Quick Shifter Plus, it's downshifting as well. So this is where the slipper clutch and the Quick Shifter Plus sort of start to work together. So imagine uh, without this, slipper clutch, if we were to shift down aggressively, the back tire could get slowed too much, could lock and beep, 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 and sort of start hopping into the turns. The slipper clutch takes that all away completely. So imagine we're coming to the turn really hard, we're on the brakes, bang it down a gear, the back end's in control with traction the whole time, hit that apex, back on the gas and out of there. So the quick shifter plus and the slipper clutch working together make it a lot easier to sort of ride with more aggressive sort of sporting manner on the street. That sounds amazing. So obviously this bike has traction control. I guess it's gonna help me when it comes to riding, right? Yeah, for sure. Like you mentioned you wanna use the bike for commuting to work. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that sort of situations, traction control is really, really beneficial. You know, slippery inner city streets, uh, lots of cars and traffic and things to focus on. And you've got this sort of extra kind of help in the background. And the big thing with those traction control systems, it's never gonna hold you back. It's never gonna detract from the ride. It's just gonna be there to kind of help you out in the background should you need it. You know, at the weekend, you know, you're gonna take off up into the mountains, get on the gas, but more sort of sporting riding. You know, slippery patch mid corner, maybe a bit of loose gravel, something like that. You're just gonna have that extra bit of help in the background should you need it. And again, it's never gonna hold you back. It's just gonna be there for, to help if you need it.
Chris, as a former road rider, I have a different seating position and stuff, so I, I guess I have to figure a few things out when it comes to off-road riding, right? Yeah, definitely the, the body position between uh, sort of road riding and off-road or dirt road, loose surface rising, it's quite different. Uh, you know, you don't want to be sort of tucked down full aero like you would be on a, on a MotoGP bike sort of right. thing. Yeah, so we, the first thing is you want to be further forwards on the bike. Okay. So we want to be as close to central sort of 50-50 as we can, so right towards the front of the seat and you know, that's where that narrowness in the tank, that ability to move around is really important. So we're moving forwards on the seat and then rolling your hips forwards so your back's kind of straight up and down and you're like engaging your core. And the idea is we want to kind of lock in through our legs, stabilize through our core, and that allows us to keep our upper body really soft and relaxed. So with your arms, instead of having like a road drop in your elbows, you want to have your elbows nice and wide. So that's giving you the strength across your shoulders, strength across your chest to kind of support your head and keep yourself in control on these sort of rough, bumpy surfaces. And really important is you want to get into the habit of resting your finger on the clutch and the brake controls. Okay. So that they're there straight away when you need them. So it's not like you're having to go and reach for that clutch uh, if you, you know, need to disengage that power or get to the brake, it's, it's there straight away. Really important habit to get into that one. And with your foot control, so the clutch and the brake, it's, you want to have your toes back more sort of on the balls of your feet, on the okay. foot pegs, and then you're bringing your foot forwards to use the brake, bringing it back, bringing your foot forwards to use the gear lever, bringing it back. Getting used to that sort of back and forth of the controls is really important. So it doesn't want to be like an in and an out movement, it's a backwards and forwards movement. And it's really important to kind of practice this, you know, on the quiet street, uh, in the car park, something like that. So it's all really nice and familiar to you before you get out into the, into the off-road situations. Definitely gonna do that. Nice. <laughs> so I'm guessing with your, your background in road riding, uh, standing up on the bikes, pretty foreign to you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was always wondering why you have to stand up when, when you're off-road riding. Yeah, so you don't have to stand up when you're off-road riding. Okay. Uh, that's a, a you know, common mistake people make, but uh, there's definitely times where it's beneficial. So if the trail's really rough, it's bouncing around the place, uh, it's, it's nicer to stand up, you have more sort of influence on the bike, right. uh, and it can kind of help isolate you from the bumps and the terrain a bit more. Uh, when it's slippery, lo low traction, that sort of situation, it's a benefit. But it's, you know, it's really important if we're doing the standing up thing that we're doing it right. Yeah. yeah. Can you show me how to do it right? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, really important, the first thing to start off with is that your, your shins, your lower legs, straight up and down. So we don't want to be kind of standing like this with our knees forwards. That's going to make it really hard on your legs, really hard on your glutes and kind of put you out of balance. Okay. So there's, yeah, the lower leg, your shins straight up and down. That's it. So you're locking into that, the bike with your knees, you can sort of hold the bike with your knees. And then from there, we want to kind of hinge through your hips. So you're pushing your hips backwards, basically sticking your butt out the back and allowing that bend to come into your knees. So it's from there into there. And again, you know, the elbows come out nice and wide. Yeah. Head up, looking down the trail. That, that, looks, that looks really good. Are you, you sure you've not done this before? No. <laughs> you're looking good, man. <laughs> Thanks. So Chris, what about the braking? You know, when I'm going on the road, the ground's like solid and then everything's ready for me to brake. But if I'm going off the road, do I have to think about anything specific when it comes to braking? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty important skill to master for sure. I think one of the big changes between more sort of street braking and off-road braking is we're using a lot more rear brake, a lot of reliance on the rear brake when we're brake, uh, braking in the off-road. Okay. A good way to think about it is the rear brake is there to stabilize the bike, stop all the weight coming forwards, holding the bike in a straight line. So the back brake's main job is to stabilize you, the front brake's job is to slow you down. Okay. So when we're braking, we want to bring our foot forwards, so you're just braking with the end of your boot, so basically with your toes, not moving your foot all the way forwards and braking with like the ball of your foot. We don't want to be using the rear brake pedal like a third foot peg. <laughs> so you're still sort of locking into that brake, uh, foot peg and then using that uh, toes on the brake pedal. And we want to have a nice sort of smooth feeling for that back wheel. We're not locking it up and sliding it, but just nice gentle control of that back brake. Um, the front brake, smooth rolling into that front brake pressure. And the really good thing to remember, you know, you've got this off-road ABS. If you do reach the limits of that front brake, of the, the, the traction in that front brake, the ABS is going to fix it. So it's really good to sort of get that confidence going and being more aggressive with that front brake and learning to kind of trust that ABS system. For your body position, we're kind of rolling the hips back. So you're kind of rolling your hips back a bit more and you can push your chest further back, not excessively, just kind of coming from there into there. And the big thing is like learning to trust that off-road ABS that you can really squeeze on that lever and 
get the bike to slow down and sort of aggressive as quickly as you can. So I did hit some corners on the dirt. Do you have any advice for me when it comes to cornering on uh, off-road? Yeah, I understand where you're coming from for sure. Uh, I had a big problem when I got into adventure riding trying to learn all the road style. So, you know, as a dirt bike guy getting into adventure, I had to try and figure out, you know, the, the whole road technique and that does not work in the off-road at all. Right. So imagine in a, in a left-hand corner on the road, you know, we're, we're dropping our elbow, we're tipping in with the head, leaning into the corner. In the off-road, it's the total opposite. We're trying to lean the bike over into the turn, but keep your weight directly central, straight up at the top of the tires. So you tip the bike over underneath you, but you're keeping your weight central to the tires. So you're moving your head and your shoulders more to the outside, your hips more to the outside. Keep Keeping that weight directly over the tyres, kind of allowing the bike to lean and keeping that downwards pressure, your weight centred over the contact patch of the tyres as you turn. So the really cool thing with this, you know that, that feeling of, of the bike sliding and slipping in the turns? Absolutely. Yeah, that kind of goes away. But if it does start to slip, you move and slide with it, so the slip turns into a drift. And drifts are really fun. Yeah, they are. <laughs> cool. So like with the right technique and all this technology, I think you're going to be in for a lot of fun. For sure, we all want to go for a long distance drive. Are there any specific parts that you would might recommend to us? Yeah, I think the, the number one would be the engine protection. So the good thing with that, especially when you're more new to off-road, is that you're straight into extra confidence. So that you know the bike's equipped, so when you're going to sort of difficult terrain, you're not having to worry about damaging the motorbike. And you know, if you get your line a bit wrong, you stump out on a rock, it's not going to be that big a deal. Uh, in that same vein, uh, the extra hand guards, the hand protection, if you drop the bike, it's going to protect your levers, you know, pushing through the bushes, stones, that sort of thing. Extra protection for your hands. You combine that with the engine protection, the, you know, the bike's going to be pretty well looked after. For sure, we are going to take a lot of gear with us. How do we store the gear properly on the bike? Yeah, for me, uh, I, I much prefer the fabric of the soft luggage. Uh, over the aluminium boxes. I think that's much more uh, suitable for off-road riding. And KTM make a good sort of side bags and a tail bag. You put all those together, you're going to have more than enough storage space for everything that you need to take on a journey like that. Last but not least, motorcycle riders, we all love sound. What would you recommend for the sound? Yeah, the Akropovich slip-on, uh, it's a nice addition. You know, it makes the bike sound really good. Uh, lighter weight exhaust and uh, maybe a little bit more horsepower as well. So really nice addition you can make to the bike. So there's a huge amount of power parts available for the KTM 390 Adventure and you can really use these to customize the bike, get the bike set up for your style of adventure riding and really make the bike your own. All right, man, thanks for joining us today and uh, I hope you have a heap of fun sort of discovering the whole world of, of adventure riding. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. No See you soon. So at the start of this, we asked what makes the KTM 390 Adventure such a great entry into the world of adventure bike riding. So I know Dominic and I talked about all sorts of different things, uh, but I really believe this is a great package for getting into adventure bike riding. And it's, it's underrated by a lot of people, but only people that haven't ridden it and haven't experienced what a fun bike this is to ride. So this bike is lightweight with a great power to weight ratio. It's easy to manage, it's strong, You've got lots of features, lots of technology to help you through your adventure riding, and you've got the ability to customize it and make it your own for the KTM Power Parts. So you put all these different factors together and the bike becomes a great entry point into the extreme world of KTM adventure.